Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. And this video is gonna be what I hope will be the first in a new series of quick design tips in Lightburn. No projects, no radical designs, just quick design tips using the tools and getting all you can, maximizing, wringing out all the goody in Lightburn. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a shadow of any font that you have. No special techniques are needed, no, no special downloads. You're, you're just gonna follow some very, very simple tips or uh, uh, five simple steps to create a shadow on any font, okay? So no introductions, let's jump straight into Lightburn and check this out. So what I have here is create a shadow in Lightburn on any font and this is grouped together. I'm gonna to ungroup this so you can see what I have here is, uh, I'm sure I've already done an offset on that, so you can't see it. I'll show you the different fonts in a second. But if we look, let's, uh, let's grab all of it and look at the preview. Preview, and take a look real good here. So you can see I've got the font and then it's shadow underneath. And I'm getting those lines there because the, the LPI is what you're seeing. But I'm gonna create a shadow on four different fonts and it's quick and it's simple. So I come down here and here we go. Here I have these, let's ungroup them and you can see this is Bondini, that Century, Dubai Light and Hollywood Hills. These are just text. These are not a path. They're just text in four random fonts. I've positioned them where I want them. Now I'm going to group them. Now, why is it important to group them? Because if you're creating a shadow and you want to have the light source, one light source, then you want an, an equal shadow. You don't want to have one set of words got one type of shadow, one's got a different size shadow. So I group them all together to make sure I'm creating one shadow from one light source. One very crucial thing you need to check before you do these next steps. Check your spelling, check your punctuation, check anything that you may need to edit, <laughs> look for any mistakes, because once we start doing the shadows, we're gonna be converting these fonts, these texts will be converted to paths. And once it's a path, you can no longer edit your text. So check your spelling, check your punctuation, do your proofreading, maybe call someone else to check it for you. Because once you do the shadow, no longer editable. So everything's grouped together. Now I'm gonna create two duplicates by hitting Control D twice. One, two. When I do that, the last duplicate I created is what is selected. Now I'm gonna move it both horizontally and vertically. And then I'm gonna come up here and grab one of the originals. What's moving and selected is what I, or with the, uh, the Vegas lights, the ants, is what I just moved. I'm gonna hold Shift and select one of the duplicates up top and I'll do my Boolean subtract. Then I'm gonna come back and subtract or select the one of the or the original font and I'm going to do an offset. I'm gonna do an inward offset. It really doesn't matter about round or corners because I'm only doing a 0.2 millimeter offset. So you, even if I did round, it, you're not gonna see a whole lot of difference there. You see a little point there on that R. If I turn it to round, you don't see a point on it. Nothing drastic. Let's do round, why not? But do not do outer shapes only. If you turn on outer shapes only, you get this different result. You don't get an offset of this piece, so you wanna turn outer shapes only off. You don't need to select the uh, resulting objects, and optimize is always a good thing to do, so okay. So now, I just created this up here that quick with those simple steps. Now, I'm gonna show you how you can make this better even yet. 
but most of you fully understand it already and you don't need to watch any more and you're going to jump over to Lightburn and you're going to try it yourself, you might get a result and it might work, but it's not going to be the best result. It's not going to give you your best outcome from your laser. So for those that didn't stay tuned to watch this, they'll be back. I'm glad you're still here. If I take and look at this preview, Oh, I've only got one of them selected. So let's select the whole thing. There we go. And now look at the preview. There we go. If I zoom in good and tight, you can see the LPI. You can see the, the, the movement from the stepper motors as it's engraving. And you can see it's a line, you know, open, it's, open, it's just open lines. There's no closure to this piece at all. There's no additional definition. And what that's going to do is it's not going to give you a very crisp, defined image when you engrave it. So to add definition, to close that all up and give a defined line to those ends of those letters, come to your cuts and layers, open it up. You're in fill mode or else you wouldn't be seeing what you're seeing. But come over here to your plus sign and add a sublayer. Add a new sublayer and leave it in line mode. So now you're going to do a fill with the speed and powers that you need to get the results that you want on the material that you're working with. Then you're going to do a line after fill. And on a line, you can probably slow it down a little bit, reduce your power a little bit. Uh, because you don't need to over, you don't want to over burn that line, and it might do that if you leave your speed and powers the same. So you might reduce the power a little, reduce the uh, speeds a little, and say okay. That may take some testing. If you're not familiar with line after feel, it may take some testing to figure out what your best drop in power and speeds might be. Now with that done, if I go look at the same preview. And we zoom in good and tight. Now you have a line after each of those. It closes that path up. It adds definition to each of those letters. You've got this where it's going to give you a defined edge on that, that letter. So you'll have a definitive end to where that letter's at. And you will still actually see a You'll see the, the difference between the letter and the shadow. So the line after fill is crucial to get even more definition to this trick with creating shadows. And in the next video in this same type of series, I'm going to show you how to create height. How you're going to raise that text up off of the, the, the surface with the shadow even further further away so hope you're looking forward to seeing that i'm steve hobo with wood and this is a quick but hopefully useful light burn tip see you in the next video